hello, hello, hello. Uh, checking in with uh, tracks, ch tracks, chapters uh, six, seven, and eight of uh, the Ten Thousand Doors of January. Where, 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 where? Um, so we leave January in the uh, mental institution. And uh, we follow her parents because it's her parents and we know it's her parents. And at the very end of this, indeed, it's the parents who uh, give birth to their little girl who they name after the god of the month, January. Um, and yes, so it starts out with, oh, we're going to leave. We're going to leave um, Adelaide Ab, Ad, Ab, Ad, Adelaide, Adelaide Ab. Um, on her thing, and we follow um, uh, Yul Jan, Julian, um, uh, making his transformation uh, to scholar. Um, him, him suddenly having a purpose because he goes through the door and he falls in love with the girl. And he must know. He must know. So he transforms himself into into a, into a scholar who is pursuing and, and tracking down many stories of the thing he's all about the words and this is we get this kind of i i don't know this whole novelist thing of like the words words are the most important thing in the world words stories they're wonderful which is like yes they are however when you have an, an, an author do that in a book it seems oddly always seems to me oddly self masturbatory uh, um, like it's jerking off about how awesome I am or how awesome my profession is it's just like you don't need to do that that's what we're here for as readers to, to, to let you know that and, and appreciators um, when you appreciate yourself it's, it's vanity when others appreciate you you can be beautiful and amazing uh, and, uh, and uh, it's, you do your job while you're doing that um, but that's not your job to do. That's just a little minor rant on my own. Um, so yes, he's, he's going around searching, searching, searching. Um, drop back into, uh, January in the mental institution where she is visit, visited by Hallstrom, uh, who is, says, oh, I mean, it's her uncle. And she's strapped to the bed because, uh, oh, we left her because she had gotten her book back. Unfortunately, the second she gets her book back, the, um, the, the nurses come in, catch her with it. They take her to the doctor who takes the book away. She gets sedated. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's quite, quite miserable. Um, Hallstrom visits and kind of reveals that he is indeed not of this world. He is some kind of a vampire creature. He indeed references Stoker and how Stoker should have been executed for being so indiscreet. Uh, and he indeed takes off his gloves and touches her and makes her go very, very cold. Luckily, is interrupted by the nurse. And it's at that point where she begs, begs, begs for the book back. Uh, and, you know, this is this is definitely your kind of the cliche kind of nurse ratchet thing, but like nurse ratchet actually is a nice person, or, or you know person actually wants to do good and brings her the book, gives her the book, and she she's she clutches the book. I think she finds a note in it saying "Hold on, January, hold on," and she thinks it's a note from um, from Samuel, her 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 uh, handsome handsome serving guy, um, Bo, um, and then back into the parent story where the parents do meet up. They do meet up. He discovers, hears tales of a strange white witch on sailing the, on the, the, the oceans on a boat that does not have any words written on it, which is unheard of because, um, she has gone to what, she, she went, she went to like Colorado or something and built a boat on the top of a mountain, which she apparently took through the thing and into her his world and is sailing sailing in this what they consider the most god awful ugly boat with no writing on it. They you bring in they unite, uh, they get married, she gets pregnant, she calls his, his name is Yule in 
something scholar. She calls him Julian. <coughs> and she gets pregnant. And he's like, oh, him, him. And she's like, no, it's her, it's her. And he's come back and found her keel, uh, you know, bent over, obviously in labor. And it's like, oh, he's coming. It's like, no, her, her. And indeed, it's her, which they named January because... This is her parents, who then the book immediately addresses her as. It's like, this is our book. This is our gift to you, our daughter. Um, uh, and that's where we leave it. That's where we leave it. Um, so it's interesting because the January sections are done very much kind of direct dialogue, kind of your traditional, you know, he said, she said, I, I did this, I acted, um, Whereas the rest of it is written as kind of a more expository, um, expository book, where he's even uses the third person when he's talking about himself, Julian, uh, and then drops into the first person every once in a while. But it's very told at a distance, which is it's a different narrative, a different narrative thing. There's there's one that it's like it's just happening to her, and we get all her experiential. Um, feelings and thoughts and, 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 and sensory stuff. Whereas uh, the other one is told very much like, well, I, I hear told this story. And then, and then he tells about himself as a young man um, outside of him. Like, so even that isn't told in a kind of experiential way. Uh, and uh, it's like, oh, I'm actually not that as invested in the parents, maybe as a result of that. That that just skipping back and forth between the two narrative techniques, um, you know, I'm I'm more engaged with January than I am with her parents, which I don't think is the thing. The, the thing, and there's also just the thing of like, okay, at the very beginning, it's like, yeah, I know this is her parents. I knew this like right from the beginning. That's her mother. Oh, and look, this guy comes through the thing who's dark skin with tattoos. Yep, that's her father. And it's like, um, I think it's both is and isn't supposed to be a surprise. It'll be interesting to see if January takes it as a surprise. I mean, you could be, you could forgive her because she's a character in this, in the story versus us as the readers of a story and going, well, that's who it is. That's the only reason why you'd be telling us it this way. So yeah, yeah, it's going well. It's easy to, it's easy to listen. Um, yeah, I don't find the, uh, the whole kind of gushing about words thing, particularly that entrancing um, thing. Um, there's definitely, you know, I, 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 you know, the whole thing of a woman being thrown into an insane asylum is definitely. Um, I can see that having a resonance. Um, it's not really told any differently than any other story of that way. So it's not like engaging me that much. So yeah. Okay. I will leave it there though. More videos later.